Hi, Greg Alderman, One Voice Board. Welcome, glad you're here. This is part two of the spears up, spears out metaphor. So if you haven't watched that, it's gonna be helpful to watch that video first before you watch this. All right, let's dive right back in. I want you to imagine with me, once again, we have this tribe. There's a group of elders. They've sent their leader up the tree and he's organizing the work of the tribe. There's housing, there's a place of worship, there's education, there's the food production, and of course, there's the generation of power for the community, okay? And we talked about the spears up, spears out metaphor. I want you to think with me on one issue of spears up because this happens in a lot of churches. People always ask me when I'm visiting with them, they say, you know, what happens when, you know, the pastor is not doing what we asked him to do? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. Those spears up is hold them accountable. Now, it's easy to understand what you're supposed to do. I admit that it's hard to do the accountability process. There's a lot more training that goes into that, but stick with me for a moment. Let me give you an example from the board that, that, you, can, that you can follow and realize why the pastor would need to be held accountable or the tribal chief in this case. Imagine the tribal chief saying, hey, listen, we're gonna put the food production here and we're gonna put the power production here. And the water flows this way. And the tribal elders are watching this happen going, that's a bad idea. Because if you put food production downstream from power production, the food can be tainted and, and maybe affected by the power that's being generated uh, upstream. So they hold that pastor accountable. Now the pastor at that point or the tribal chief has two choices because this is literally a do or die situation. The, the elders get serious and they're like, hey, listen, you need to do this. And if you don't, we're gonna have to have a new chief. So the chief has a choice. He's either gonna agree in that change or he's gonna move on and find a new tribe. In this case, this metaphor is pretty easy to understand. The elders are 100% right. The food production needs to be upstream from the power of production. Now let, let's apply this to a church for a minute. One of the basic ways to describe the five purposes of a church, and, and this is very common across all traditions, is to think about the five things we need to do as a congregation. Rick Warren popularized this idea in Purpose Driven Church. He said, hey, listen, every, every congregation of Christians needs to have worship, evangelism, discipleship, ministry, and fellowship. So let's use that as an example here. Imagine these five priorities now are represented by the five priorities of a church. The place of worship in the center of town, all right, we'll call that our worship priority, right? And imagine, you know, education taking place, well, that's our discipleship, okay? Power, I like the power idea being our evangelism. And fellowship is for housing. And then of course you have ministry, which is the food. I kind of like that metaphor over there, ministry for the food, because when you do ministry, you partner with God. He fuels you. You get a chance to see him up, working up close. You get a chance to see God in action. And he also feeds other people. You see, our purpose as Christians is to have these five priorities built into us because the purpose, the reason that the church exists is to make disciples. And what does a disciple do? A disciple goes and builds the kingdom. They go and share the good news with everyone they meet. So these five aspects are not only important for the corporate life of the church, but they're also things that model and teach what each of us as believers need to incorporate into our lifestyle. We need to have a life centered on worship. We are sent to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to do the work of evangelism. We need to be built up, educated, if you will, trained, equipped, as it says in Ephesians 4, for the work of ministry. We need to have a ministry, to a place where we're using the gifts. Every believer is gifted. Every believer in the body of Christ is gifted, and they are meant to join God in what he's up to and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And of course, we need fellowship, a place where we are nurtured, cared for, where we're known, and where we're loved. A group of elders holds a pastor accountable for carrying out these priorities. Now, 
Sometimes these elders may decide, hey, listen, we want to do worship in a couple different ways. We want to do worship in one style and worship in another style. Or they may have very specific ideas about the order of worship. Regardless of that, they are a worshiping community. And they're going to agree and partner together with the pastor to make sure that the leader the pastor has designated for the worship is carrying out that task. And of course, the elders are holding him accountable, spears up. But we also know the tribal elders do something else super important. They also protect the pastor. And they have spears out. Because every once in a while, people in the church grumble. Sometimes they grumble for the right reasons. Sometimes they grumble for the wrong reasons. I'll let you decide which constitutes which. But when the pastor's up the tree, doing what he's supposed to be doing, he needs to be protected. Spears out. I hope this metaphor helps you and rounds out your understanding of the role that you have, not only as individuals on the board, but also together as a group, as you partner and protect your pastor, as he fulfills the purpose you've agreed on, and you hold him accountable to it. We'll see you next time.